the record, recording no, no problem. I will do that. The recording uh, started. Um, with Max's permission. Max, yes, can you give me more time? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, we have until... In the All right. The record... We have until... <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Now, I think you can, you can give me permission yeah. now to yeah. share uh, the, the presentation. Yes. Let's get back in there and do that now. Let's see, there you go. Um, because when you right clicked on my name, you could have just given me permission to record. But there you go, you are host now. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right. Let me. All right. So over okay. here. Okay. Yes. Um. Again. And good morning, uh, participants, uh, and also Max, the coordinator of this program, uh, for organizing this very important training program. I think in cooperation with uh, the World Bank, as well as Pura. All right, um, I'll, today I'll be talking to you about the Gambia cybersecurity landscape. As part of the overview, we will talk about uh, the situational analysis, uh, the alignment with the National Development Plan of 2018 to 2021. We'll talk about the IC Act, which has a formulation process. We'll also talk about the cybersecurity assessment that was conducted by Commonwealth CTO, and also the first National Cybersecurity Strategy and Action Plan formulation process. We will also talk about the GMC side initiation, but uh, just briefly, because Max has a lot to say on that, I, I believe. And we will also talk, talk about Gambia's membership to the Global Forum on Cybersecurity Expertise and our engagements. We will talk about the cybersecurity maturity model supported by Oxford and also our engagements with the EU and ECOWAS organized crime for West Africa, for West African response on cybersecurity and cybercrime project. We'll talk about our engagements with the Council of Europe on the cybercrime bill formulation process, as well as the data protection policy. We'll talk about the updated national cybersecurity policy strategy and action plan, validated one, and we will talk about the national cybersecurity awareness campaign, as well as cybersecurity trainings that have uh, that have been done previously. <clears throat> we all know that uh, Gambia is a population of about two million people, uh, with a land size of about uh, eleven thousand two hundred and ninety-five square kilometers, a GDP of over uh, one billion uh, as of 2017 estimates. Uh, we have five key TV stations. I believe that number has increased. Eight internet service providers, uh, three mobile operators with 3G services, and uh, two out of three is in the GVA area. Maybe that has also increased. These are statistics that have been recorded uh, a little earlier. Uh, we we have a fixed broadband penetration rate of about 2% <clears throat> as, part, as part of PURA's report of 2018, mobile internet uh, of 50%. Uh, two thousand, we have about 2 million, uh, 2.8 million mobile subscribers uh, and also 35 commercial and seven community radio license issued for so far and four GSM providers. <clears throat> we know that the situation as it stands, we have an infrastructure, which is the Africa Coast to Europe submarine key cable, uh, which has a capacity of over 100 gig. Uh, we have uh, the ECOWAS, uh, what, with the ECOWAS project that was supported uh, by IDB, Science Development Bank, this rolled out 817 kilometers of fiber uh, across the country. And uh, with the NBN, uh, with the NBN project, the National uh, Broadband Network, not fiber backbone, uh, also complemented what 420 kilometers uh, to the 817. The legacy fiber also was there before, which was 130 kilometers. This is making a total of about 1,367 kilometers. 
As part of Pura's 2018 uh, report, uh, ICT services growth, growth by, the growth was reduced at 4.3%. Uh, the services share of the GDP is above 1%. And the investment decreased by 60%. Uh, uh, QSEL, Gamtel, Comium did not report any figures of the year, that year. And employment rose by 26% from 2017. This is so critical to know what the uh, infrastructure situation is in the country, because this is a some, this is a very critical infrastructure that needs to be protected, and also to see how the ICT sector is being focused when it comes to economic growth as well as employment. So going to the next slide, um, this uh, cyber security is in line with our national development plan and under critical enabler five uh, which states making the gambia a digital uh, a digital it should be a digital nation sorry and a modern information society um, as part of that it has deliverables uh, that is expected which is to strengthen cyber security and in that uh, uh, cyber crime has become an emerging threat globally. Uh, government uh, will implement the national and has implemented or will implement the national cybersecurity strategy and action plan in order to mitigate threats. Uh, government will also strive to build local capacity, including defense systems and personnel to protect national security, as well as establish of a cyber computer in, uh, computer security incident response team, which will be equipped with the necessary resources to avert and combat not only cyber threats emanating locally, but internationally as well. Now, moving on to the next slide, we have the IC Act 2009. The IC Information Communication Act of 2009 was passed by the National Assembly on the 29th May 2000. And then nine. Although it has few amendments of 2013 that were done in the 2013 uh, version, but it's composed, the, the cybersecurity component is more uh, focused on cybercrime and also computer misuse. Yes, so the provisions are very limited. Sir, yes. I'm Hello. Sorry. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Yes. Can you please keep uh, an eye on the waiting room? I think okay, yes, uh, I've been doing that. Oh, great. Yes, yes, I've, been, uh, yes, I've been asking. All right, thank you very much. I'm sorry for that interruption. <laughs> no, no, that's that's okay, that's okay. So um, the IC Act of 2009 uh, does not have much uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. It, it mostly addresses issues with regards to cybercrime, but not very comprehensive and also issues of computer misuse. There are some aspects of electronic transactions, electronic signatures, and also the protection of children, mainly through um, the distribution of child pornography and also the, uh, the retention of those materials and also the deletion order. Those were some of the things that were captured, but cybersecurity as a whole, not much has been touched. So, Coming to the computer misuse and cybercrime provisions in the Information Communication Act of 2009, we have unauthorized, unauthorized access to computer data. Um, this was a provision that was there, and access with intent to commit offenses. offenses. Uh, we have also provisions of unauthorized access to an interception of computer service, unauthorized modification of computer material, damaging or denying access to computer system and unlawful possession of devices and data. These were some of the things. And some of these provisions were also translated or trans transferred into the, the, the cyber crime legislation or bill uh, that is in the process of review and to be tabled at the National Assembly for possible en enactment. So, it also has provisions for un un unauthorized disclosure of passwords, publishing of information which is obscene in electronic form, reprogramming of mobile telephone, possession or supply of anything for reprogramming mobile phones, computer-related extortion, fraud, and forgery. 
these provisions are also embedded and uh, even enhanced into the recent cybercrime bill. So the cybersecurity assessment common that was conducted by Commonwealth in 2014, if my memory serves me well, the Commonwealth sent a team of experts, two people to conduct a five cybersecurity assessment with a view of coming up with a strategy. This objective was, was to come, uh, the, the process stalled due to political issues um, that involved our, our withdrawal from the Commonwealth. So the document was retained till date. In 20, of 2015 towards 2016, the ministry uh, through the WASIP funded project uh, uh, staged a consultancy for the formulation of a national cybersecurity strategy and action plan. Uh, this, was, this contract was awarded to Expertise France, which conducted, conducted the consultancy and delivered a strategy document an action plan uh, and also formulated a national technical committee that comprised of various and relevant stakeholders within the sector. And also they produced a SAD guidance on how to give, develop the SAD for the Gambia in line with the strategy that was developed and also some legal implementations as an annex. These legal implementations were to enhance the IC Act to cater in for more uh, risk, uh, more present or uh, more present needs of addressing cybersecurity. So the National Cybersecurity Strategy and Action Plan of 2016 comprised of five goals. The first goal was to build capacity of the people, uh, both users and professionals, of course, and provide the Gambia with an institutional framework specific to cybersecurity, uh, mostly cyber governance, and also ensure that ICT systems are actually protected and made resilient and uh, using the GMC SAT as a point of alert for cyber incidents and also support in the vulnerability assessment of entities and also uh, rolling out policies in order for entities to uh, uh, um, improve their cybersecurity posture. It also had a goal for provision providing, sorry, the Gambia with a comprehensive legal and regulatory framework, as well as ensuring uh, national international cooperation uh, so to ensure best practice and also sharing information, as well as mutual assistance in capacity building, both infrastructure and human resource wise. Now the GMC SAT initiation, uh, in 2014, again, if my memory serves me well, but Max can come up more clarity, the Gambia signed a deal with the ITU through the IMPACT project. The IMPACT at the time was responsible for cybersecurity, I think uh, cybersecurity trainings or cyber drills. Uh, they were in line with, they were in cooperation with ITU. They were the ones that were supposed to establish the, uh, the, the DMC start for us. But as time passed, uh, we had to renewable we had the, the, the contract with impact with IT phased out. So it was given to another company, which currently is implementing that. Uh, the project was partly funded through the WASIP project, also put a chip in, in some of their resources. And uh, they are the ones that are going to do the, uh, the that, have, that are going to have purview over the DMC SAT operations uh, within a particular time period. The GMC SAT is now implemented and will be in full operations soon. And Max can give you more insight as regards that. So the Global Forum on Cybersecurity Expertise, uh, this is an international organization. It was, um, it was uh, initially um, uh, formulated by the Netherlands government in order to build cybersecurity capacity and also help uh, countries uh, as a clearinghouse mechanism to receive their, their request for support in cybersecurity capacity building and channel it to donors, uh, the donor community. So normally they would do some kind of a coordination of your request and meet with the donors that, I, uh, that might have interest in your request uh, so that those donors 
will support the project. The first contact that was made with the GMC was done in 2016. During a visit I'm, uh, with the um, Honorable, then Honorable Minister of Information and Communication Infrastructure, Sheriff Bojan, and I uh, to Dakar uh, during the Dakar Cybersecurity Conference. The GFCE uh, expressed interest in partnering with the Gambia at the time. And then follow up was done to that in 2018 and Gambia officially became a member. Gambia participated in board working groups. GFCE has working groups A, B, C, D, up to E. Um, they, in various areas, cyber crime, capacity, uh, cyber security capacity building, cyber norms, you know, cyber standards, you name it. Uh, even uh, CSATs, they have so many working groups. So, uh, in, and the ministry as well as PURA participated in some of these working groups and as well as the annual meetings. In 2019, Gambia requested for cybersecurity capacity building support through GFCE. As part of my uh, attendance in one of the working group sessions in April 2019 at The Hague, um, I came up with a request through the ministry uh, for GFCE through its clearinghouse, reach out to the donor community and assist the Gambia in achieving the implementation of our national cybersecurity strategy of 2016 and its action plans. And also, uh, as you can remember, the five goals that we are set. I, we were taxed as a ministry to break down those five goals into deliverables. And in line, we have done that and submitted to GFCE. And through that other the partners within the GFCE, such as the ECOWAS OCRRC project, which we are a partner to, were convinced and eventually offered the Gambia to establish a digital forensics laboratory, among other stuff. Support is being coordinated by the GFCE. So the cybersecurity maturity model. In 2018, the World Bank in partnership with the Oxford University um, conducted a cybersecurity assessment program that is known as the cybersecurity maturity model. This is a model that is used to inform the processes of developing policies and strategies of countries' cybersecurity, cybersecurity policies and strategies. So it's a well-known model and it came out with recommendations. In 2019, the report came out and, and can be found on our website in the link that you can see on the screen here. You can read the full report and the recommendations. These recommendations were actually used uh, to update the cybersecurity strategy that was developed uh, this year in 2020 and validated. The cybersecurity maturity model has five dimensions. Uh, the first dimension is cybersecurity strategy and policy. The second is cybersecurity culture and society. The third is cybersecurity education, training, and skills. The fourth is legal and regulatory frameworks. The fifth is standards, organizations, uh, and technologies. The ECOWAS OCRRC project um, is a regional project uh, being coordinated by ECOWAS, funded by the European Union. And uh, OCRRC means Organized Crime West African Response on cybersecurity and cybercrime. They, they conducted an assessment for member, con member countries plus Mauritania. And uh, in 2019, they did that assessment in the Gambia and they went to various sectors. We had the opportunity to go to the Office of the National Security Advisor, the Ministry of Interior, to go to uh, Pura, Moisi, uh, as well as others. Gambia eventually became, uh, was selected as one of the pilots because as part of the project, the OCWRC project has many activities. And as part of those activities, they, they wanted to give a pilot to two countries and uh, they later increased it to four countries. And Gambia was lucky to be one of the countries selected for the renovation or establishment of a digital forensics laboratory. As I currently speak, the Gambia sits on the Regional Technical Committee, which I represent the ministry. And we have we have had uh, various uh, um, meetings, uh, one in Abidjan, the other one, if I can recall, was in Senegal. And in, in the process of formulating a regional cybersecurity strategy, as well as cybercrime strategy. 
these documents were formulated. Uh, they were circulated also in the country for public comments to the various institutions that are a stakeholder to the sector. And those comments were incorporated, sent back to the ECOWAS and the project team, OCWRC project team, for review and incorporation. The two documents are validated uh, right now, and they are there with ECOWAS. The other document that was also developed and validated through the same consultation uh, process using the Regional Technical Committee was the Regional Critical Infrastructure Policy. Mainly what ECOWAS objective is, is to make sure that countries take these regional uh, strategies and uh, policies and try to domesticate them in the various member state countries plus Mauritania. Now, coming to this uh, Council of Europe Cybercrime Bill formulation. Uh, Council of Europe began support, supporting uh, the ministry in the Cybercrime Bill formulation in 2018. They had initial engagements. Uh, through the Glacier Plus project that funded the, the activity, the Gambia uh, uh, was helped in drafting a cybercrime bill. The cybercrime bill was more comprehensive and took uh, into consideration three components. One was uh, criminal offenses, and two was procedural matters, and three was international cooperation. Criminal offenses were the ones that catered in for what constitutes an offense. And the procedural matters were the investigative procedures and the, uh, the processes that involve in the collection of data and evidences that could be admissible in court. And the international cooperation was the mutual assistance sharing of best practices and data in order to tackle cyber crime within the, within the region. This bill went through, uh, this bill was trying, was, was, uh, they were trying to align it as much as possible to the Budapest Convention, uh, which was is an international cybercrime convention recognized globally, but it's from a Euro, Eurocentric approach. Uh, but many countries in other regions are also adopting it and ratifying it. I think Senegal, if I'm in my, is a signatory or has ratified it. So in order to accede to the Budapest Convention, there are certain things that Gambia is required to achieve. And one of it is to align and harmonize its cybercrime laws with the international best practices. So the bill went through a cabinet, uh, went through cabinet and came out with recommendations. It's currently being restructured by um, uh, the Ministry of Justice before it is finally tabled at the National Assembly. The bill will help the Gambia in the, its accession process, as I said before, uh, uh, to the Budapest Convention. So this Council of Europe data protection policy. In 2019, a data protection policy was also drafted, uh, which was supported by the Council of Europe. The same year, the policy was adopted by cabinet and it is enforced for your information. The policy is in line with achieving Convention 108, which is also protection of people's data, uh, privacy and data. It's a convention also developed by the Council of Europe, and many countries have also ratified it. Uh, actually, data protection is to ensure human rights, as well as the protection of people and uh, the, the data of people and entities from breaches and also to help hold um, operators accountable or service providers accountable that have access or retain people's data for, for, for the, for, in order for them to conduct their business transactions. Those data need to be protected and we have to have laws that are in place that will facilitate that. So based on that, the Council of Europe extended an offer to the Gambia government, uh, to, through the Ministry of Information and Communication Infrastructure to formulate a data, data protection bill. Right now, currently, as I speak, we are in consultation with them to stage a consultative workshop in November as a tentative date in order before the end of the year to come out with a bill on data protection that is also going to be tabled at the National Assembly. And of course, before that, through the cabinet. The National Cybersecurity Policy Strategy and Action Plan Formulation, I call this phase two, because there was one in 2016, 
Well, because of uh, the recommendations of the CMM report, the country uh, cybersecurity maturity model that was done by Oxford, there were recommendations to have the uh, cybersecurity policy, sorry, strategy updated. And we took into context uh, the recommendations of the CMM uh, uh, report as part of uh, the composition of both the policy strategy and action plan. This consultancy was given to, um, it was came through the ICT master plan consultancy and was given to lasting solutions which deliver the components uh, and, and the cybersecurity. And for the first time, the cybersecurity policy was formulated. And, and uh, previously, the cybersecurity strategy did not have a policy, or even it had a policy, the policy did not stand out as a uh, separate document. It was embedded in the ICT, if I can, ICT for development policy, where there were just a few statements. What it was, the need, we saw it in need to have a standout policy, which was developed for the first time. The other aspect that this consultancy took into account was the costing of the action plan. In the National Cybersecurity Strategy or Action Plan of 2016, it was not costed. So that was a big oversight and a lesson that we learned. So for this time around, we made sure that that was taken care of. So we had a costed master action plan. The strategy, and okay, the validated documents are in the process of being submitted to cabinet for adoption. No, the cybersecurity awareness campaign. As I speak, uh, Max is one of those that will be part of the campaign and uh, other relevant stakeholders. The ministry took upon itself uh, the objective to spread awareness over cybersecurity issues nationwide and make people become more aware on how to protect themselves and how to approach the internet and computing devices or other devices that are computer related. In 2019, based on the recommendations of the 2016 strategy, an awareness implementation strategy was developed in Moise in-house. This was approved. And as part of that strategy, we have, two ob we have uh, three, ob three objectives. And in those objectives, we are implementing objectives two and three. So activities four and five of objectives two, two and three respectively. And as part of those activities is to launch a national cybersecurity awareness campaign. And in that campaign, we are involved in three TV stations, six radio stations, six print media outlets uh, to conduct the uh, campaign nationwide. We used a multi-stakeholder approach in order to achieve this. We made sure we invited stakeholders from the public, the pro private sector, as well as the civil society organizations. And as, as we speak, we did our rehearsals uh, last weekend and looking forward to stage our first uh, TV sessions uh, this, this week, if everything goes right. Now, coming to the cybersecurity training, uh, I would not want to be here, but what I can say, the cybersecurity training was done both locally and overseas, although the overseas uh, one was very limited. Um, and the long term one was also very limited. And I think there is need to look into this area for government and other the and also private sector as the capacity building efforts, both locally and also support uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 as I speak, uh, it has, it's been, it has conducted some training. Uh, for the DFC staff themselves, and I was privy, uh, or I was opportune to training for the other sectors as well. And there are pl planned trainings for law enforcement agencies on digital forensics as part of this year's cyber cybersecurity uh, program that we intend to achieve before the end of this year. Uh, with that, I think I'm done. If there's any question and answers, uh, thank you. Hello, Ahmad? Yes, you are, Hello. you are, you are. Yes, thank well you. Done. Thank you very much. Well presented. Yes. So, so Max, I would, I would try 
transfer the, um, the host rights to you, okay? Yeah, please. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, okay. All right, you have the hosting rights, Max. Um, Sarusi, I once again okay. uh, wish to express my thanks and uh, appreciations for a very informative uh, update on the um, cybersecurity landscape in the Gambia. Um, again, it's never an opportunity you know, that happens around you where uh, we don't pick at least, at least one or two things. So I'm sure a lot of our colleagues have also gathered some things about the background um, as far as cybersecurity in the country is concerned. This is very important that we understand what's on the ground, uh, that we know what's going on, who and who are involved, both locally and at international level. And um, it's, it's really great that um, you came from the ministry and gave us a very good outline of um, things historically up to the current situation, including even the cybercrime bill and um, uh, covering things like the CM and, you know, done by Oxford and all that. Um, uh, this, is, this is great. So everybody, uh, please, let's join hands and uh, thank Mr. Sanusi. Then I'll open the floor for a few questions before we go into the next session. But let's uh, express our appreciation by a round of applause. And uh, thank you very much, Sanusi. You can unmute yourselves and let's clap like you know, that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Max, for those compliments again. Thank you. <laughs> I am behind you. And um, without you, um, with Allah's degree, uh, sorry, sorry for coming last. Sorry for coming yes, last. Sorry for coming. Thank okay. you. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Max. Thank you, and everyone. Thank you for uh, you see, uh, He's so he's so humble, but trust me, he's a high above you know all of us here. So um, he's one person that is always available. He's always very willing to share knowledge and experience, and he will always tap you know, where necessary on the other, other people's opinions and things like that. So this is just a short statement. It's not a compliment, this is factual. So everybody who's attended uh, this session, note uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, note that Sanusi is, you know, the, the, the person that I just described. I mean, if you have needs for certain things, for guidance and all that, always feel free to contact him. And uh, any direction he points you, so, so you know, it's, it's, it's actually the first thing to add. So once again, uh, we, would, we want to express our position to the ministry, and uh, by not by extension, but primarily to um, Sadran. We look forward to further collaborations. Um, as he is explaining, there are some sessions coming up by the ministry, and Pura is also coming up with other stuff. So we will express a part calendar. You will, you will express, uh, can you please express? Thank you, Max. Uh, also, also uh, Max, yes, Max uh, there was a mistake. Instead of uh, making you host, uh, I mistakenly made this uh, Dylan has host. So, Idrisa, can you uh, please help and transfer the host rights to uh, Max? Um, can, can somebody transfer the rights back to me, the host rights? Yes, we transfer to Idrisa. I think Idrisa should be the one to it. Idrisa Gillen. Yes, Max. Can you right click on my name and then make post? Okay, let me do that now. Yes, thank you very much. Not yet? No, not yet. I'm scrolling down to check for your name on the list. No, it, it should not be my name. If you say Gambia CSI. Oh, oh, 
Okay, that's right. I think I've seen it. Yes, Emily. Yeah, 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 Okay, just write and uh, make notes. Yes, I've done that. Okay, excellent. There are people waiting in the um in the lobby. Okay, now now that I have uh, the back, so I'm letting them in uh, from the lobby. So thank you very much once again, Samusi. Um, we have questions. So um, can you please? Hold for just a moment more. I know you have a tightly packed um, calendar. Um, first one was Bakeva. Is it still? Is your hand still up? Yeah, Suso Bakeva. Is that Suso? Commander. Yes, my hand is still up. Yes. But what does to amend We can hear you in the line. Yeah. But back away, it's really bad. Yeah. Why not he use the chat? The chat. Okay, you can also type questions. Uh, no, actually, it was in the. Uh, actually, it wasn't a question. It was a, a comment that I wanted to make. Okay, now it's a bit better. We can hear you now. Yes. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I just want, you can hear yes, you. I, I just want to compliment you. As you rightly right, really said, I want to concur with you of the statement to Salusi. Uh, he mentioned during his deliberation about this TFL. Uh, uh, really bad. And then he is doing very great for, for that being the case. <laughs> maybe I will have the opportunity when the night because I can I, I can hear you very clearly. But it's okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, it may be uh, the connection is uh, proceeding, but sometimes yeah. it's clear and other times it's true. I think the best thing to do is to stop your video. Um, uh, Commander, you can stop your video and then um, just go ahead and talk. Yes, I stopped the video now. You can hear me now, now clearly. You, now you can. Yes. Hey, I just want to say comment and to concur with you on uh, the statement you mentioned about uh, Sanusi. Right, right. With, the estab yes, with the establishment or proposed establishment of this TFL right. for the Gambia Police Force, he spearheaded everything. And then uh, I want to commend him for the <laughs> help and assistance through his ministry that they are doing for the establishment of this TFL. He is a very humble person and he is always available whenever the need arises. And then he is clearly guiding us in the establishment. And then he is fighting very hard always thing to me much for the DFM to materialize. So I want to Okay. Uh, anyway, thank you, Mr. Sousa, for those compliments. Thank you, but we are in it together. <laughs> You also you see, you know. see, this is what I'm talking about. You know, people state facts and then you call them compliments. So somebody has supported my opinion. Now you have to accept it. <laughs> it's not, it's no longer a compliment. Um, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, anybody has any other questions? Okay, does anybody have any other questions before we move on to the next uh, session? Uh, Hello, Hello, yes. 
Okay, Usman, uh, go ahead, please, with your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sonusi, for that uh, cybersecurity overview that you have just released. Everything is just loud and clear. The only thing I just wanted to ask is under the cyber security maturity model. Uh, yes. Hello? Yeah, yes, could you repeat that? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Under the cyber security maturity model, mm -hmm. you said yes. you said it has five dimensions. Yes. yes. Yes, can you please just go over to the again? Because I only listed the cyber security education training and skills. I get it right. Oh, okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Usman. Um, yes. I think the best uh, for that is, can you hang on, we will share the presentation. There's okay. a particular slide that has all those um, five dimensions. I particularly remember seeing those. And then okay. if you have um, any additional questions or you need him to explain um, further on any of the points, um, then just send, just send an email. Okay, all right. Send okay. it to me and I'll make sure that it's forwarded to you, Sanusi, immediately. Okay. So all right. It cannot be answered right there. And then um, once the forum is open, you know, that, that room, once um, the group is open, then you can um, start posting questions there and uh, Sanusi will be glad to answer directly. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's a pleasure. That was a very good question, though. Thank you so much. And uh, let's let's try our central banker, Mr. Governor Etaisa Kante. Yes, sir. Etaisa Kante, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'll first this, this start by thanking Sanazi Drame for the good and informative presentation, and I'll concur with the, Mr. Jonga. Sansi's character is worth emulating. So I think he is not only complimenting you, but he is only stating the facts. Okay, going to the question that, yeah, regarding the situation of cybersecurity in the globe and particularly the Gambia, we all know so many cyber incidences are happening in the Gambia, whether the institutions or the the people that are affected are knowing it or only we all know that it's happening. So regarding the form, uh, the establishment of the digital forensic, forensic lab, uh, what access do institutions or the members of the public have? Like if there is an, a, an incident happen and they need to do some forensic in, investigation, would there be any access for them to involve whoever, those that are uh, taking care of them to help them uh, at least get to the bottom of whatever they are trying to investigate? Yeah, the, that is a fantastic question. Uh, it, it is, a, first of all, I would also like to thank you for the compliments again. <laughs> you will not agree with me, but that's what, how I see it. Yes, um, the digital forensics lab is in its infancy, uh, as I speak. We are negotiating with uh, the, um, the, the project. Uh, to procure the equipment. In fact, we have received the equipment list and we have made reviews and comments. It is expected, actually, uh, to deliver those needs, uh, as I said. Um, digital forensics is to investigate digital uh, incidents uh, that are maybe malicious or maybe for other reasons. And, make, may, um, and the investigation should be uh, made in such a way that any report that emanates from it is admissible in court. Because if the right procedures are not followed when doing a digital incident investigation, normally certain courts will throw out. For example, let's say a laptop right now is uh, being used by a hacker. So the, the hacker was suspect, some, that person was suspected of hacking and he was raided and his laptop was seized. Now the forensics team uh, once they get logged into that laptop, the evidence is destroyed. Some of the courts do not know that. So the way you collect evidence is very important. You have to have the right tools. In such a case, they will have to drive, uh, mirror the drive. You know, they will take out the hard drive 
of that particular laptop, get another hard drive and mirror it. And then the investigation would be done on the mirrored hard drive, the one that was the copy was transferred to. This is to ensure that the evidence of the original in the original hard drive is intact. So these procedures would have to take place. Now, who are this, who are the people who will be benefit? Just like in any, any police incident, let's say any incident that, re, that requires reporting to police. For example, you have a criminal that comes to your house, a burglar, and he's caught. You go to the police, you report the case, the police investigates. It's going to be somehow similar, a similar approach. But uh, with this question, it's very important also to have a framework in place. Also to have uh, some kind of a guide or policy, uh, not, or a policy in place that will, that will guide digital forensics. For example, um, I can engage the, uh, the ECOWAS team to make sure that as part of their deliverables, they have some kind of a, a institutional framework set in place for the digital forensics lab. That will help a lot and how uh, incidents are investigated. Another, another way this is done is through the GMC side. They will not actually do the forensics per se, but they would use it's a reporting line and they can try to help institutions to mitigate those things. And the GMC side will be collaborating with all of these key stakeholders, like the police and who all of those that have a stake in cybersecurity in the in the country. So it's, it's a very important question. Um, but the in, individuals, as I said, when you report a case, a cybersecurity incident, you are, it's, it's expected that the police investigate that case. Entities also. So but it's not defined on paper on how that digital forensics investigation is going to go about. But this brings to the question, do we need this framework in place? Yes. And uh, if others will concur with me, so that I can relay this information to the project to formulate something as part of their implementation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much uh, once again, Samusi. Uh, looks like we can never stop saying thank you. And um, since this is a democracy, uh, I think my opinion of um, you stands. Everybody's uh, concurring with me. So uh, I win the elections, right? Yeah, Mr. Max. <laughs> Who is this? Yeah, it's Samate. Oh, okay, Samate, fire away. Yeah, I just yeah I just want to elaborate on what Salusi was saying. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, this um, like uh, for how we do, we conduct our forensic investigations. But there's a lot but, of yes, yes, normally like when a computer you know is involved in a crime. We don't uh, go into it directly, go on the computer and then go into the you know, looking at uh, looking at the you know the suspected files or whatsoever. Like what what he was saying that exactly like we, we are doing best practices. Like we use our forensic uh, forensics you know, tools, you know. We have a forensics computer, you know, and there, uh, and then we use our this forensic uh, software application like Autopsy or F FTK to mirror. Mirror the suspect's computer uh, the hard drive. You know, after mirroring the hard drive, then that was the time you know we have access to the information of the particular suspect's computer without going through uh, his computer, the suspect's computer, to right. investigate directly. But then to use the mirror to uh, investigate it through our uh, forensic image. Right, right, right. Um, uh, yes, uh, Samadhi, uh, very valuable. Um, uh, contribution there to uh, add way to what some uh, people say, and yes, that is right. And uh, we actually do have one session where we will be talking about um, the sort of uh, investigations and um, the norms of how they are uh, conducted. And um, at that session, you know, which is probably a group work, I can't remember. We will um, discuss a lot more. Uh, we don't want to go to technical uh, at this point until we get to um, that particular session. But yes, uh, Samate has just uh, displayed that you know he is really a <laughs> police officer. That's uh, uh, with his uh, skill sets really being sharpened, and uh, that's that's the procedure. Um, moving on to let's take the last question because it's um, eating into the uh, final session today. This is the last question, and that will be from uh, Louis Patrick Jaju. Uh, Mr. Jaju, um, 
Mr. Daru from Tanjungku. Uh, Hi, good afternoon, everyone. You accept that you are from Kanjungu? <laughs> no, probably because of us. Okay, thanks very much. Once again, I want to thank Sanasi for that, <laughs> for those vital information. Uh, two questions. I just want verification. Um, what will be the composition of the digital forensic lab? The, the, the composition of the team, who are those going to be responsible of this lab? The second thing is about the, uh, the, the GFC cert. Uh, I am not very familiar with the institution. I wanted to ask also, is it a state institution or or a private institution that is partnering with uh, with 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 Moise or Pura. I, I I just wanted a clear information. Um, I may be behind this, but uh, when I say behind, maybe in terms of information, I don't have much knowledge about the institution per se. Basically, those were my questions. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, this I would address this, I will give it to Max because he's the main man for the GMC side. So the first, first was the, the, the composition of the team uh, concerning the digital forensics laboratory. We have not yet composed the team, but we have composed a team to coordinate the implementation. As part of the implementation, we will do a, we will go through a vetting process. Like people from the police, uh, or personnel from the police will be brought in, or the, their CVs or whatever, their proposals or their nominations will be brought in. We will look at it to see that whether these people are IT, very IT competent in order to take up such tasks. That would be one. Even though there will be capacity building as part of this project, but we wanted to start with those who have the necessary skills, uh, necessary IT skills from the, from the get-go in order for us to have a very competent team. So the composition of this team will mainly come from Gambia Police Force. I think it will come from Gambia Police Force because they are the beneficiary. Yes. Now, regarding the, the, the second part, I will, throw, I will throw that to Max. <laughs> Max, can you try to maybe shed light on that? Sorry, Sanusi. I'm always sending or responding to some um, concerns of uh, certain users that they sent on WhatsApp and so on. I think I missed the question. Okay, the second question. Yes. And uh, Mr. P Mr. Patrick, also I missed some part of that question too. Can you repeat it? Okay. What I was asking is the GM GMC cert. Is it a state institution? or a private institution that is partnering with Pura and Moise. Oh, okay, great, thanks so much. Um, yeah, that was easy enough. Um, the, the CERT was established by the, um, let's say, by the ministry as a matter of policy in the national cybersecurity strategy. Um, they came up with the need for the government to have a CERT um, among other things, in order to implement a uh, cybersecurity strategy um, on the ground in uh, building of resilience of the um, uh, CNIs. Um, Pura, as a partner or the regulator, is responsible for implementing the policies of the ministry in the regulated sectors, of which the ICT sector is one of them. So Pura um, agreed with the ministry to spearhead the establishment and the setting up, you know, rule out and initial operation of the CERT. Um, even though it is currently, you know, funded and um, virtually uh, financed by Pura, as far as the operations are concerned, it is pseudo independent. 
And uh, in a little bit, actually, there will be some sort of complete independence of the um, search, uh, where it is autonomous, apart from um, policy and uh, regulatory issues, but the operations uh, are supposed to be autonomous. Um, because we will be reporting to a board, and a board that is selected across um, different stakeholders, key stakeholders. You will see in my presentations coming up very soon, um, comprising of, let's say, the ministry, somebody from Pura, from defense, from uh, um, the intelligence sector, and you know, things like that. So we'll have one person from each of them sitting at a board uh, that the said reports to, and then by extension also to uh, the minister uh, or director general of Pura, or the two of them together, um, as an information um, uh, channel just to report to them uh, what's going on but not the actual nitty gritty of the operations or the inerts of the set itself. It's just the policy and regulatory aspects that are um, uh, sent out of the office here for operational and budget support and things like that for administration. Uh, but in my presentation coming up in just a couple of minutes, I'll be delving a little further into that. Um, uh, is that, that okay that answers your question? Yes, thanks, Max. Thanks so much. Okay, you're most welcome, Patrick. So uh, I can I can give you your permanent visa to stay. You will not go back to Kanjuku. I'll keep you around. Uh, okay, um, now I think this brings us to the uh, end of the uh, wonderful presentation by again by um, Sanusi. So we will go over to the next um, link. Now the initial email, once again, the initial email that has the three links is not valid for the next session. I sent a separate email with just one link. It's the last email that I sent and that contains the link that you should use in order to gain access to the meeting. Um, people are still sending me messages that they cannot access and um, things like that. It's, it's uh, distracting me a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and close out this uh, session. And then we go to session two, which is introduction uh, to the GM set. Yeah, um, yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah, I, I want to get the link that you just you said you have sent. Who is this? Yes, uh, Chairman. 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 But why, why is it you never receive anything? And I'm showing you. Email yeah, but I told you in the morning. At, yeah, I told you the morning. I had my email on the, on the group email list. No, I just sent that one. Is international. And I'm showing you an email address here. Baba Chief. What I mean, uh, uh, gmail.com. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 please hold. Baba Chief at gmail.com, right? Yes. Okay, I'll send it. That one I can tell you for sure. Go and check that email box. Hello, Max. Check your disk also. Me too. I have not yet received it. And who is that? It is a country. I have not yet received the email. Hold on, I can't do it. That's e at cbg.gm. Yes. Okay. Yours because it wasn't here. I'm gonna go ahead and forward it. There was an email that I sent not long ago. Can you refresh your mails and see? This came today. And that is session two, right? Yeah, it says link to session two. Pura cyber security and that's training. To no, 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 listen. It says Pura cyber security training, link to session two. That's the email that I sent. Um, Idrisa, uh, Kande, you and um, Bimbo, I'm sending this again. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sending this again, but I even show that uh, you have already sent. Thank you. Have your mail server is not acting. Okay, um, the mail has gone, so give it a minute or so, and then you can turn in. So I'm going to go ahead and end this session so I can open the other one. Okay? Yes. Everybody, bye bye. And uh, we'll see in the next session in two minutes. Okay. Thank you.
everyone. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Thank you so much. All right.